Alright guys, yo, what up? So, as I said before, I would have a review up today, and of course, that review would be the film I just got back from seeing the pre-screen showing of, which was great pre-screening, like always, crowd, full, full sold-out theater, great crowd. That film, of course, X-Men, The X-Men, Days of Future Past. My favorite storyline from the X-Men universe Actually went, actually went back and read the comic book again and of course watched the cartoon again the storyline because I love that storyline and I must say this film did not disappoint whatsoever holy shit you know Brian Singer I, I was worried about him because you know but I still pissed I was pissed off at him mainly for fucking up my Superman film but then I got Man of Steel so it's all good now. But he has redeemed himself. He has redeemed himself completely. Now, first let's get into this. For those who don't know, Dexman Days of the Future Past centers around the story, a storyline of where an incident that happens in the um, past for due to one of the ex, due to one of the mutant characters sets off a chain reaction that basically starts the demise of mutants and almost humankind. For a lot of humans too, because it's not just mutants in danger. It's every, ev everyone is essentially in danger. Um, first, let's start off here. Um, the film started off. I'm going to try to keep spoilers down because I don't want to ruin anything for you guys who might be going out this Friday or Saturday who haven't seen the movie yet, and you might watch this review. So just in case, but yes, movie starts out really with uh, the opening. Um, you get the voiceover from uh, Xavier. Which, of course, the classic voiceover with Patrick Stewart. The guy's got a great voice. I mean, he's one of those guys when you, he starts talking, you start listening. But, and then, it immediately kicks into the X-Men um, old intros. Because, you know, how Singer always had, like, a cool X-Men intro and the X-Men theme from X-Men 2 and 1, which they brought that back, which I thought that was really cool with the intro and stuff. And, um, of course, it starts off with the battle that... Um, the clip they had shot on YouTube, but it continues with um, the Sentinels attacking, and essentially Kitty Pride, Bishop, Blink, Warpath, Colossus, and Iceman all fighting to hold off. And you, what, what we have in the we have is Kitty Pride essentially with Bishop is trying to get get him to this get him to the room. So essentially, Kitty Pride can move his consciousness back to um in time or back a few hours. So he they can they um he can warn himself of what is going to happen because this basically how they've been surviving is Kitty Pride keeps sending Bishop back like a few um hours and at a time to warn them so they know what's going to happen and they can vent and get to the next location get to a different location and out of there before the Sentinels can attack. So they get then we have um they get they do they go through all that they get out of there and of course then it kicks in we um. Intro: Patrick Stewart, Magneto, and Wolverine. Essentially, Kitty Pride um, starts telling them what they've been, the plan, how they've been going, and of course, then um, Professor X lays out a plan of if we can go back into the past or when this first started back in the 70s, we can prevent and try to change this happening. Kitty Pride basically tells them, "I can't do that, Professor. Your mind, you won't be able to handle it. I, it would rip completely, rip you apart." Enter Wolverine because Wolverine, Wolverine could be at the handle of that. Now, as we all know in the comics, it was not Wolverine; it was Kitty Pride who was sent back. But now, Kitty Pride is the one who's sending sending Wolverine back instead of her getting sent back. Um, I the biggest thing I like about this film is I did I love the pacing of this film, and of course, Fastbender and McAvoy knocked it out of the park again. Um. Both of them, they're great actors, great play off, playing off of each other. Um, Peter Dinklage is Bolivar Trask. Great job. I mean, Peter Dinklage, there's not much you can say about it. The guy's a great actor. If you watch Game of Thrones and are, in a song, uh, and are a Song of Ice and Fire fan as I, as I am, then you know that, if you've, like I said, you've seen the show, you know how great this man is. He's, he's a phenomenal actor. Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique. Jennifer Lawrence, Mystique in this was like at a new level. We got so much more Mystique than we've ever got in any X-Men movie, which was kind of cool because I've always, Mystique has always been this un really unique character in terms of her powers, considering that not many people, if anybody has 
like the type of thing powers that she has. And well, of course, biggest thing was um, she would have more, the most screen time because of course Jennifer Lawrence, being as big as she is, they wanted to give Mystique more time, being that she's being played by Jennifer Lawrence, which that was fine. Also, I one thing that worried me was Wolverine. It's because okay, they're using Wolverine instead of Kitty Pryde. Is this going to be another X um man where it just centers all around Wolverine and it's just all Wolverine? But no, in all honesty, the time that Wolverine's on this. Magneto, Ma McAvoy, Fassbender, Lawrence, even Beast, and um, Jackman all got adamant screen time, all about equal screen time, which was really good. This film wasn't just about Wolverine. This was basically more about Charles Xavier trying to overcome his doubts and basically the low point that he has become from basically what happened the events of what in the fallout of X-Men First Class. And I really liked that. And there was some really raw emotion with this film. McAvoy did, um, delivered some really heartfelt raw emotion. Especially in that scene between him and Xavier. I won't spoil it. I mean you saw that little glimpse. And that's a really great scene. I really love that scene. It was really powerful. You feel that this character really has completely lost all hope. And you know that he is, is their only chance. And I really felt power with that scene. Of course, when you have two really good actors like that drawing off each other, it, and it just was a really great and, and um, powerful scene. Um, I'm not going to spoil characters who get knocked off and killed um, throughout this film. You, I'm going to let you guys see that for yourself. Because let me tell you something. There are deaths. Especially when you're dealing with the future with the X-Men fight. And let me tell you something. There are some really horrible, shocking deaths of how some of these X-Men get killed in this whole thing. I mean, there are a lot of times. There was like some times where I was like, oh, shit. Because even though you, you know that they're going to try to fix the timeline. But you see, these, you see some of these X-Men characters get killed like this. And you're just like, oh, man. I mean, I'm not kidding. There were a couple of deaths. When I, I was watching them, I'm like, oh, man. That's, I'm like, damn. I just looked at my friend and I'm like, Wow, but um, Blink, I gotta give it to Blink, oh, wow, great, she wasn't on the screen a lot, but when she was on the screen, she kicked ass, and it was cool to see this character in the films, I mean, she's a fan favorite from the comics, fan fa favorite from the Apocalypse series, um, so it was really cool to see a new character like this brought onto screen and, and given some added screen time, and of course, Blink's powers are really cool. Oh, 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 you may not think opening up portals and moving, teleporting like this and through portals isn't cool, but when you see it done, it is really cool, and Blink kicked ass. And see, so, I will, that was definitely a, a show stealer. And another thing, another thing being Quicksilver. Now, when we first got the first shot of Quicksilver, the internet blew up. Everybody was like, oh my god, that, that's, a, that's awful. What is this? This is a shit Quicksilver. What, the real one is the one we're getting in Joss Reading's Avengers. Let me tell you something. As people have said, and critics have said in reviews, and as other people say, Quicksilver stole the screen. Every minute he was on screen, it was awesome. And I gotta say, the guy who played Quicksilver did a great job and I'm spoiler alert here close your ears they biggest thing and I didn't think they would do this they did reference Quicksilver that he is that of uh, being Magneto's son that was really cool that they, they did throw in a reference of oh he's Magneto's son it was there's this fun this I guess I'll just give it away there's this funny moment after they free Magneto and um they do the thing and Magneto and Quicksilver in the elevator. He's like, and he's talking to him. He's like, he's like, so what do you can do? He's like, uh, I move, I uh, move uh, uh, metal objects. He's like, huh, funny. He's like, my mom knew a guy who could uh, move metal. And you just see this look on Magneto's face like, hmm. <laughs> and I, I, I really like that because they basically reference the saying, Magne this is Magneto's son. But he doesn't know it, or it could be Magneto's son, but we all know in the comics it is. So I really like that reference. I didn't think they would do a reference like that, and it was cool. Biggest thing what's cool is how they were able to miss, uh, tie all this stuff in the events that have happened. And let me say, when this film, this film has completely erased Last Stand. So if you're a Last Stand fan, that film doesn't exist anymore. It does not exist. It never happened. This film did 
its job to erase that film. And I gotta give credit of how they molded a lot of this, like, what has happened in the past X-Men films and stuff into this and helped it actually center and made it make sense. There's so many things, uh, quoting from the other X-Men movies in terms of characters and just little images and stuff. And I really love that. Like, so like I said, this, in terms of acting, the acting was great. The emotion, this had the emotion, this had the story, this had everything you wanted to get out of a, this type of, the Days of Future Past storyline. Like I said, if you know this storyline, this is what you wanted out of this. And this is what I wanted, and this is what I wanted out of a comic book, and or especially out of an X-Men film. And I got that. Sentinels, I thought, looked cool. Sentinels in the future were awesome, badass, menacing, terrorizing. And it's really cool of how the whole idea of how the Sentinels, the future Sentinels, how they act and why they're so powerful. I'll let you guys see the movie and um, get um, find out that whole interesting stuff, which kind of ties into Mystique, but that's all I'll say about that. Um, so, yeah, overall, this film was excellent. This delivered on every key point that I wanted out of a comic book and an X-Men film. And, it, and big and also big thing when you go see this movie stay to the end of the credits because oh my that last shot and I think you know what it is because it has to do with the next film the last shot of that and remember when you when you look make sure you look to the left too because there's I'll just I'll give you a little hint there's the last shot of a known guy whose title is at the top of the next X-Men film and make sure you look off to the left because there's four people standing there if you get my drift along with this character because this character four if you're, you're comic book fans you will know what I'm referencing at and make cause and when I saw that when I saw that when they were turning and I saw the character but then when they turned and sort of panned also to the side and I saw those four guys standing there I was like oh it's him in the four I was like oh yes I cannot wait to the next one but ooh man let me tell you they're gonna, it's going to be a rough battle come the next X-Men it, it ain't going to be no cake walk, to t uh, cake walk to take this guy down but yeah X-Men Days of Future Past this film was excellent so now it is time for me to rate the film on a scale of 1 to 10. I rate all the films and the reviews I do on the IMDb scale of 1 to 10. Like I always say, I don't do in-betweens. I'm not, I could, but I just don't. So this film, let's rev it up. This film gets a covenant. I gave this, I, I gave, I mean, I gave Captain America a 9 because it was excellent, but this film is going to get 10. This film gets the Covenant 10. A, a score I don't normally, I, don't, I rarely give out and don't give out very often to a lot of, especially when I give it out to some films, but I don't give it out very often to comic book films a lot of times. But this gets the 10. If I had to rate this film, I this is probably my favorite Marvel. Let me key phrase this. Excluding Dark Knight and DC, excluding DC, this is my favorite Marvel film. At this point, it would go Days, First Class, Avengers, Captain America, Thor the Dark World, in that order. So, for me to say something like that, being that I'm a Joss Whedon fanboy, and how I own Firefly merchandise and memorabilia, considering how much I love that show, and a fan of Joss, for me to put something ahead of Joss, it's not easy to do. Especially this, far, especially how I have two things, but... I think the X-Men movies are on the right track. I think they finally have settled into where they um, should be, into this type of storylines that we want to see and what they can do. And in terms of giving us stuff we haven't seen before in any comics or in any X-Men, they're not retreading, which is great. And I love the and I keep the, hopefully the motion just keeps moving with the X-Men. We got there's so many more storylines to go. You got I mean, when you do Apocalypse, you open up for Sinister and you open up for a lot of other things. So yeah. X-Men Days of Future Past. Have you seen it? Did you go to the pre-screening? Are you going to go see it Friday, Saturday, or Sunday? Did you see it? Are you going to go back and see it again? I know I am. Leave some comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video, which will most likely be 
I got to, I got some more reviews coming up next week, which will most likely be Maleficent and a million ways to die in the rest. So I I'll see you guys in the next video.